the grip for him to lever himself up. John, according to all the traditions, is here as an exile. Um, they differ precisely as to why he was here, who exiled him, but they all agree that he was here as a result of his Christian belief. Although there is no archaeological evidence of a Roman prison, the location of the island suggests it served a military purpose. Patmos may have been one of a number of fortress islands defending the important Roman seaport of Miletus, about 40 miles away on the mainland. It was an ideal place to detain exiles. But if John was in exile, it seems strange that he had the freedom to find a cave, see visions, write them down, and then to send the documents to his churches back on the mainland. This may well be due to the way Rome exiled troublemakers. When Roman authorities would place someone in exile, he would have had quite a bit of freedom. He wouldn't have been imprisoned. He would have only been excluded from appearing in certain regions, or he would have been told that he had to restrict his movements to just this one island. But he may have been able to carry on a correspondence through intermediaries who would sail from the island back to the mainland and return so that he may have been able to keep in touch with the churches he was addressing. Despite this freedom to communicate, John was still trapped on Patmos, separated from the Christian churches in Asia Minor. This sense of frustration may have led John to write Revelation with its violent images of worldwide catastrophe. The theory is that John was furious with the Romans for persecuting him and his fellow Christians. There's a lot of anger in Revelation and a yearning for justice to be done. And that's often been seen as a direct result of Roman persecution of Christians. On the face of it, John had every reason to be angry. The established view is that in the first century, the Roman authorities systematically persecuted Christians across the empire. It was believed that the violence started about 20 years before Revelation was written, under the reign of the Emperor Nero in AD 64. Tradition has it that Nero blamed the Christians for the tragic and catastrophic fire that devastated the city in that year. Some Christians were crucified and used their bodies as torches to light the pathways into the city. It was such a devastating experience that the memories of Nero stayed within early Christian communities. Most academics agree that Nero did persecute Christians, but Revelation probably wasn't written under Nero. It's been dated to around AD 90, in the reign of the Emperor Domitian. And evidence in Revelation itself seems to show that Domitian was far less brutal than Nero. If Revelation had been motivated by the persecution of John's community, then you might expect him to list a host of martyrs by name. In fact, Revelation mentions only one. The book is obsessed with those who have died on account of their testimony to Jesus, numbers them in the thousands, but he only names one, a believer named Antipas who has died on account of his testimony. Although John does mention the death of the martyr Antipas, there's now evidence that the Emperor Domitian may not have the blood of many Christians on his hands after all. Recent historians have begun to question whether Domitian actually did persecute Christians, and indeed whether he was quite the tyrant that he was made out to be by later historians. 
there's not a great deal of evidence for that when one begins to scratch the surface. So if Christians were not being systematically persecuted, it's hard to imagine how Revelation could have had any impact on its audience. John must have had another target. These second century ruins hold a vital clue as to what drove John to write Revelation and whether the book really does have the key to the end of the world. The ancient city of Pergamum lies 200 miles north of Ephesus in modern day Turkey and it was a major political and religious center in the Roman province of Asia Minor. It was also home to one of the fledgling Christian communities who first received the Book of Revelation. But Dan Showalter, an expert in biblical archaeology, believes that Pergamum's pagan temples give the greatest insight into what concerned John. The partially reconstructed remains give us a good idea of what an impressive building this would have been but it was actually in the courtyard around the temple where most of the activity would have taken place. There would have been sacrifice on an altar in front of the temple. The people would have gathered around, would have sung songs, would have offered prayers and vows. And then when the ceremony was over, they might have been able to take home some meat to help supplement their diet. John was familiar with pagan worship but this religious practice was growing in popularity and was in direct conflict with Christianity. It had begun around 100 years before Domitian with the building of temples to a new god, the Emperor Augustus. There would have been sacrifices that took place at the imperial temple where people in the city would have gathered and participated in honoring both the presence and power of Rome and the emperor as an individual. This idolatry spread across Asia Minor throughout the first century. Every city in the Roman Empire had many temples, but this was one built to worship and give thanks to a living person, an imperial god. And here may lie the key to revelation. For John, this cult of the emperor would have been a terrible blasphemy. John would have resisted the imperial cult because it stood against the belief in Jesus that he was so interested in promoting. John is a Jewish Christian and he knows there's only one true God so uh, he cannot because of his upbringing compromise in any way on that basic fact but the most compelling evidence that the Roman Empire and especially the imperial cult was John's target comes from one of his most frightening visions, a terrifying beast who makes war against God's people. The beast, he writes, demands worship. And this gives the first clue as to what it really represents. Worship of the imperial gods had become extremely popular to the degree that persons who didn't participate may have been perceived as disloyal. In this strange vision, the beast had not one head, but seven. By John's time, seven emperors had ruled the empire. John tells us that these are seven kings or rulers. And though scholars can't agree on which Roman emperors these seven heads may represent, they seem to represent Roman imperial power. John also associates the beast with seven hills. And of course, the city of Rome was known then as it is now as the city of seven hills. To many academics, these cryptic 
but repeated references to the beast show that John's target isn't Roman persecution, but the paganism of the imperial cult. However, that can't be the whole story. John's audience, as fellow Christians, would have shared his views, and therefore, there'd have been no need to write such a letter. But a closer look at the text of Revelation reveals just why John felt it was so important to send his message. John, it seems, may have been alarmed about the behavior of some members of his flock. One such church was to be found in another part of the Roman Empire. To the south of Pergamum was the ancient city of Ephesus. Standing on this square in the ancient city of Ephesus, it's easy to get a sense of the Ephesus that John would have known. The streets would have been full of people, the shops full of people selling their wares. This was an ancient port city where people would have come from all over the Mediterranean world and beyond to trade, to share ideas, and sometimes to share religions. In this Mediterranean cultural melting pot, the Christian church would have been a tiny minority. A theater like this would hold 25,000 people, and the Christian community, the churches here, would probably account for a very small percentage of that. The Christians probably would have filled up only a couple of rows. The pressure on these communities was great, especially in a thriving pagan center like Ephesus. Pressure that could weaken the faith of a struggling church. Their neighbors were continually celebrating the various gods who were popular in the region, as well as the imperial gods of Rome, and on occasion even the emperor himself. Symbols of the various deities would be all around them. One of the major issues for somebody like John seems not to be the fact that they are suffering persecution, but the fact that they've just become too comfortable. They've settled down. They've found their place in society. And he's wanted to shake them up a bit. If John was writing to those Christians who had begun to worship Rome's emperors, it would help explain why the last book of the Bible was written. The visions were less about prophesying the future and more about chastising those who had joined the imperial cult. But there is something left unanswered. The vivid apocalyptic images which have captured the imagination of millions of Christians for centuries. What possible meaning could these visions have had for John's churches? Maybe they had little to do with the cult of the divine emperor and everything to do with the visions of a terrifying future. To those who lived 2,000 years ago, John's visions of the four horsemen, Armageddon and the beast, may have held entirely different meanings than today. Some see them now as signs for the end of the world, but that's not necessarily what John meant. The word apocalyptic had a different emphasis then. Many people, when they hear the word apocalyptic, think about the end of the world. But that's only part of this great tradition. In fact, there had been other apocalypses or revelations written in the previous 200 years. The key feature of apocalyptic literature is that it claims to reveal God's will directly. It's a message that no ordinary mortal would have access to. They're all stories. A single human visionary has this dramatic revelatory experience, 
and he requires the assistance of a heavenly being to explain what he's seeing and experiencing. So the apocalypse is unfold as stories describe.